pantheon, god spirits and sacred objects. Like, I think they would have a stamp that has like yeah, every really different one. Really cool. This exhibition is about gods and sacred objects. There's Egyptian, African, Buddhism, Hinduism, many different types of gods, religions. People made sculptures about religions to worship their gods and to say thank you for what they've done. It's like very interesting, like it looks like animals and it's like very creative, like the detail, there's so much detail, it probably took so much time, like. Wait, look, look, right? Look mm -hmm. at the eyes. They're, they're, they're completely the different. They, these look ones at, have the rings, look they at, don't. Look at the way the tongue is. The other Compared way to that tongue. That one doesn't have. That tongue is not even sticking out. The tongue's tucked in. The tongue's it's tucked different. in for the so jaw. If you stand from far away, they look the same. But if you go like closer and look at them more, they look different. And this was made in the 1860s. It's been made in New Zealand, North Island. This type of panel would have lined the inside of a, um, a Maori. Uh, community meeting house. Each panel features a number of figures and these figures correspond to an ancestor of the carver and the idea was that when, you're, when the community is inside these meeting houses they would be watched over and guarded and could communicate with the figures of these ancestors. The bulging eyes and the tongue sticking out is meant to terrify your enemy. You see it in the haka. If, you, if you're a rugby fan and you watch the All Blacks play, they stick their tongue out to intimidate whoever they're playing. And you see the same thing in these. Is the artist a man or a woman? We, we don't know for sure who carved this, but um, we believe it was, um, it was a carver uh, called Hone Natoto. Generally, carvers in the past um, were men. This has a lot to do with how Maori Society was structured and the sort of ritual and ceremonial importance of the act of carving. In this period, we're talking sort of 150 years ago when this was carved, only men were carving at that time. Women would generally do uh, art forms like weaving. What tools did the artist use to carve it? Maori wood carving would have been um, used with, with two principal tools, um, one called an adze, which is um, it's a bit like a, an axe, um, and then uh, and, a, and a chisel. So basically you start with a big piece of wood, you use the adze to, to rough out the basic shape, and then to get all of the detail of the, of the intricate carving that you can see um, on these examples, you'd use a chisel. What's special about these? These two were, were, were actually commissioned for an exhibition in London at the Crystal Palace in London in, in 1867. So they, they never belonged to a particular building. And in that sense, they're unique, but also quite sad objects in that they never had the opportunity of watching over the communities from which they came. We're hugely fortunate to have such beautiful objects in our collection, which link ourselves and, and uh, communities in New Zealand.